I've been in the principal's office a lot in my day, but I've never been a school administrator. Get it? <laughs> yes, my friends, I think I might have spent a dozen or so days as a school administrator, predominantly called teacher in charge. That just meant my principal was out for the day and I was acting as the school leader for that day. Doesn't mean I don't involve myself in school, classroom, and organizational leadership. It just means I've never been in that formal role. But I know somebody who has. I'm gonna pass today's video over to Joelle McLean with five school leadership hacks you can implement today. Hello YouTube world, this is Leadership Hacks. Hi everybody, my name is Joel McLean. I am a coach, keynote speaker, and consultant with Inspire Leadership Coaching. And I'm so happy that you guys are here to join us and watching this on this YouTube channel. We're gonna be talking about leadership hacks, so tips and tricks that we can put into place and that we can use to better ourselves as leaders and you know, to have a positive impact on our lives. So you know what, let's get right to it. Now, I don't know if there are other people out there watching that are like me, but every time I'm shopping, I'm always on the lookout for signs or trinkets or games or whatever it is that, or object even that I can use uh, when I'm doing, you know, leadership lessons, when I'm doing keynotes, when I'm doing whatever it is, you know, anything that I can get, get a hold of and put into place and be able to use when I'm talking about leadership. And I just came across um, this one item in particular, and I thought it was actually, it was pretty neat and I was curious about it. So this box, you know, it's called 52 reasons why I'm happy. And this is what it looks like. So I saw that on a shelf and I thought it was, it was pretty interesting. I was curious. I said, you know what? I think I'll pick it up and I'll check it out. And I really liked it, you know, enough that I said, I can probably use this. So what it is in the box basically is a bunch of cards. So 52 cards and on these cards, well, we have reasons why, you know, you should be happy. Or reasons why we are happy and there's also this uh, this neat little holder here so a little wooden holder that comes with it very simple but extremely effective so what you do is every day you pick a card from the deck and on that card you'll find one reason that's that makes you happy one thing that makes you happy so what I'm gonna do for you guys here is that I'm gonna pick a card I'm just gonna randomly pick a card and then we're gonna read what's on it and then I'm gonna explain to you guys you know why this element in particular makes me happy so let's do this gotta shuffle it here we go all right I'm gonna pick one drum roll please all right I've got my reason here now usually you'll take your little stand and then you'll put your little card in it you know you put that on your desk you can put it uh, on your table wherever it is where other people can read it so that they can get inspired as well but here we go guys so 52 reasons why I'm happy and here is one of the reasons I am unique Ooh, that's a good one randomly picked i am unique and you know what thank the heavens that i am <laughs> there's only one of me out there that's for sure but listen uh, i think that we need to embrace our, un our uniqueness you know the unique features that we have and the qualities and our strengths as well as our weaknesses are what make up you know who we are and those things need to be embraced because when we try to be somebody else usually things don't roll as well as they could right and probably the best example that comes to mind that i can give you in terms of I am unique is, you know, the person that we are at work and the person that we are at home. And often throughout my career in education, you know, I heard a lot of people say, you got to act a certain way when you're at work. And then when you get home, you can act a different way. So, you know, I took that into consideration, especially the first years of, of teaching. And I said, you know what, maybe I've got to be a certain way at school. And there's, you know, obviously there's, there's certain ways at work that you need to act and a certain behavior. But I was also thinking that maybe it has to be a different way at home. But and what I quickly realized was that, that it's impossible. It's way too hard to try to do that, right? You know, when I wake up in the morning, I don't just flick a switch off and say, well, you know, Joel at home, I'm done being that. I'm going to shut that off and I'm going to turn on the Joel at work. So you know what? The same person at home is the same person that's at work. So to be able to embrace that uniqueness and to bring your flavor to the table, to your team, to your students, to, to your colleagues at work, is the most important thing that you can do. Just bring it, bring it to your family, bring it to your colleagues, bring your uniqueness. Being unique is something that is extremely special. Just think about that, right? So there is not one other person on this planet that is exactly like you. So that means that nobody else can bring to the table what you can bring to the table. So make sure that you're embracing that uniqueness and make sure that you're sharing that with other people. All right, guys, so listen, we've been talking about uniqueness. And one thing about being unique is, you know, the influence that we can have on people. So I always found that a very interesting topic when, when, we, when we talk about uniqueness and when we talk about influence, right? And often people will get frustrated because they worry 
or they spend a lot of energy on things that uh, that's out of their control. So, you know, things like time, things like maybe a work schedule, how others, other people behave. You know, those are all examples of things that are outside of our control, but often we'll, we'll, we'll get stuck on these things and it'll just sap the energy right out of us, right? And it'll have an impact on the kind of leader that we can be, the kind of person that we can be at home. So, you know, let's take a look at that. What does it look like? And, you know, how can we go about putting into action some strategies to be able to help us get through that? Here we go. All right, guys, here we go. Hey, I got my flip chart. Let's go old school, guys, right? Got my markers, got my flip chart. Now let's talk about your proximal zone of influence. Right, we want to talk about influence and how, uh, you know, how we're able to focus our energy at the right place in order to have an influence because leadership is influence, right? At the base, when you think about leadership, what is it exactly? It's to be able to influence another person to be better, to be a better version of themselves, to be able to adopt strategies and grow, right? So let's talk about the proximal zone of leadership. Now I'm going to start by drawing three circles. Not complicated. This has been talked about quite a bit and it's been researched quite a bit as well. So I'm going to start off with drawing three circles. So we got the first big circle that's on the outside and I'm going to use red for that. Here we go. Not perfect circle, but that's okay. Chemistry teacher, do you think I'd be able to draw circles, right? A chemistry teacher. Now in the middle here, or more towards the middle, I'm going to draw a second circle that is blue. And finally, in the middle with the green, I'm going to draw a little circle in the middle. Now, when we talk about your proximal zone of influence, you know, we can, we're able to identify, you know, the things that we actually have an impact on are things that's in our control and things that are not in our control. And we can, we can actually place it on, on a, a diagram that's very similar to this. So when we talk about this zone here, this red zone here, right? So think about this zone as things that are out of your control, right? You have no control, no control over these things. So, you know, th th those can be things like a uh, school schedule, you know, what time school starts, what time the buses pick up the kids, you know, uh, th things that are going on in, uh, in other countries where you have absolutely no control over, things that just happen regardless of what you're going to do or what you're going to say. So there are always things that are out of our control. Sometimes it could be your health, right? Things happen and our bodies are made a certain way and that's out of our control. So everything that you can think of that is outside of your control, you know, we put it on the outside of the circle. Now, when we get closer to the middle here, I'm going to write influence, right? So in this section here, the blue section, this represents all the elements for which we can have an influence on. So n not directly in control, but have an influence. For example, my kid's behavior. You know, I can have an influence on that as a teacher. The relationships that I have with my colleagues. I have a certain amount of influence on that in terms of how my how I, I build my relationships with my colleagues and how I maintain those relationships. So my health, you know, there's a certain part of my health that I can influence as well. So, you know, think of all the elements that you have an influence on, but not a direct control on. And finally, in the middle here, the green, I'm going to put me. Now in this green space is everything that is completely in your control. So we're talking about, you know, your attitude, which is in your control your diet, what you put into your mouth, and you eat every single day, that's in your control, right? The way you act, that is in your control. Uh, the amount of effort that you put out, that is in your control. And of course, the amount of yourself that you, that you put into the work that you do, that you put into your family, the amount of yourself that you share, that is totally in your control. So when we talk about your proximal zone of influence, you know, we got to take a look at where we want to put our energy because one of the main things or main reasons why a lot of people burn out or a lot of people get discouraged, well, it's because they're putting their energies in things that they don't control. So think about everything that's on the outside here, right? Other people's attitude, you know, how they're going to react. What are they going to think if I say this or if I wear that? You know, those are all things that are out of control. So let's put a big X on that. Let's not even think about that. Let's not even put any energy towards that because it's not going to do anything. You don't have any kind of influence or control in this zone here that is so far out of your proximal zone of influence that it would be a shame to waste all of your energy. And we see that in relationships often, right? Especially work relationships where things get a little, a little tense and then people will just be thinking about that and it'll be like a hamster wheel. And before you know it, everybody's in a bad mood and you know, it's just not good. So let's get away from this zone here. Let's just completely forget about that space right here. 
Now, what we want to set, I'm going to go directly to, to, to the point here, is the mean, right? This is what's fully in my control, and that is where I need to put all my energy. So let's put energy into building ourselves. Let's put energy into putting forward strategies that help me have a growth mindset, that help me maintain a growth mindset, that helps me put the best version of myself forward each and every day. Those are the things that are in my control. So can you imagine if I put all my energy into that? What can be the return on my investment? Well, let's think about this, right? The more that I invest in myself, the more that I can invest in others. The more that I put tools in my tool chest, the more that I can use those tools to be able to help others. So automatically, when I develop myself here in the center, myself, I add value to myself first. When you're a leader, the first person you lead is yourself. Automatically, I'm going to be able to add value to everything within this circle here where I have influence. And that can be my relationship with my wife, with my husband, with my kids. It can be my relationships with my colleagues, with my students, with my boss. So that has an impact everywhere. The more you invest in yourself, the more of an influence you can have on things that you don't have necessarily direct control, but that you can influence. So think about some of the things that get on your nerves at work. <laughs> you know, we all have them and that's normal. Now ask yourself that question. If I take that element, that one thing that really, really bothers me, where does that fall? Does that fall within the green category here where it's in my control? Does it fall within, you know, a parameter where I don't have direct control, but I do have an influence? Or does it really fall within, like, beyond the scope of your proximal uh, zone of influence? And you're really wasting your time and your energy thinking about this thing. So that's the first question you got to ask yourself. And then if it does fall within your zone of influence or yourself, well, then that's in your control, right? Especially if you're in the center here. What can you do to change that? What can you put forward and put into place to change that? And from there, you can start influencing a whole bunch of other elements that are just, just outside your reach as a direct, a direct control or where you're directly in control of. And then I can start having an influence. If I have a positive attitude, what kind of influence can that have on the people that surround me? If I start investing and taking the time and, and making the effort to learn, to get to know someone that I haven't really developed a, a relationship with yet at work, what can be the, the, the return on my, on my investment doing that? The more that I add to myself and the more that I learn, learn and grow, the more that I can spread what I learn and how I grow and spread that and add value to other people, thus augmenting my proximal zone of influence. So it's, it's not a complicated concept, guys, right? You know, if we're working on ourselves and we're putting in that time and we're intentionally doing these activities to be able to grow ourselves, you know, the sky's the limit, right? There's, there, there isn't anything that we can't accomplish, practically, anything that we can't accomplish. Because once we start getting outside a little bit further from our zone, our, our zone of control and we start influencing, we're not alone anymore, right? We go and we, we get some people with us and we start surrounding ourselves with the right people. And when you start surrounding yourself with the right people, plus you have that kind of an attitude and a growth mindset, hey, can you imagine what you can accomplish and how happy you could be every single day of your life? It's unbelievable. My name is Juan McLean with Inspire Leadership Coaching. So listen, if you need anything in terms of leadership development, organizational leadership development, relationships, one-on-one -on -one coaching, anything, guys, head on over to my website, inspireleadership.ca and you know, contact me and it'll be a pleasure to talk to you guys. So listen, this was Leadership Hacks. Put them into place. Think about it. Think about this. How can you grow to be able to influence the things around you so that you can have a better outcome on your future? We'll see you next time.